During the just concluded general elections in Nigeria, Lagos was the subject of unfortunate ethnic profiling and intertribal attacks. The description of Lagos as a no man's land has generated resentment from the indigenous Lagosians and other Yorubas. Is Lagos truly a no man's land? Thus, this means there are no indigenous Lagosians who called Lagos a no man's land. In this edition, we explain how Lagos came to be known as a no man's land. We will, however, not go into the full detail of Lagos history because we have already covered that in the video displayed here. We also put a link to that video in our description. Welcome to Hispul Media In Depth History. The first reference to Lagos as a no man's land was made by a man known as Jaja Anucha Wachuku in 1947. So, who was Jaja Anucha Wachuku and why did he refer to Lagos as a no man's land? Well, Jaja Wachuku came into this world on the 1st of January 1918 through the family of King Josiah Ndubusi Wachuku. King Josiah was a prominent Eze or chief of his time. He was the paramount chief, servant leader and head of all Ngwa of the then Abad division of Eastern Nigeria. His journey for academic excellence and tremendous achievement began at infant school at St. George's NDP Umuaminta in Mbausi, Abia State, where he did his primary education. Because of his innate leadership qualities, he would soon become the school band leader and prefect at government school Afipo, present-day Ibony State. He was a proud boy when he left there in 1930, having come first in the whole of Ogoja province in the first school living certificate examination. This first position got him an automatic scholarship for his secondary education at Government College Umuahia in Abia State from 1931 to 1936. Again, his leadership abilities still come to bear when he became the schoolhouse prefect. From 1936 to 1937, he was on scholarship to Yaba Higher College, Lagos, but was later withdrawn by his parents and sent to Gold Coast People's College, Adidom. He would not spend much time here before he was moved to New Africa University College, Anloga, in preparation for further studies abroad. From here, Wachugu continued with his academic excellence, winning scholarships and other prizes. From New Africa University College, Wachuku left for the University of Dublin's Trinity College in Ireland. His years in Dublin from 1939 when he matriculated in the university to 1947 when he returned to Nigeria were eventful and full of academic achievements. Wachuku was the first African medalist laureate in oratory of Trinity College, Dublin, Ireland. After a successful career in Dublin, where he practiced law, Wachuku returned to Nigeria in 1947 and got fully involved in Nigeria's constitutional conferences and struggle for independence from Great Britain. In the same year of his return to Nigeria, he joined the NCNC and was elected the party's legal advisor and member of the National Executive Committee. Here, his international legal experience and exposure would be brought to bear once again. He soon got involved in the nationalist agitation of that period and was a favored lecturer at the Global Memorial Hall, Lagos. This was where the Lagos is a no man's land came to being. There in one of his lectures, Wachuku provoked national controversy when he declared Lagos a no man's land, meaning that it was an all Nigerian city wherein all Nigerians were entitled to equal rights. This controversy has not died down since and would be exploited for political reasons in the just concluded general elections in Nigeria, particularly the governorship election in Lagos State. In 1949, he founded a radical youth movement, the New African Party, and affiliated it to the NCNC in 1950. NCNC was later renamed the National Council of Nigerian Citizens. Jaja Wachuku was the first indigenous speaker of the Nigerian House of Representatives from 1959 to 1960 and was appointed as Nigeria's inaugural Minister of Foreign Affairs and Commonwealth Relations in 1960, a position he held 
till 1965. Before this time, Jaja Wanchuku was the first Nigerian ambassador and permanent representative to the United Nations from 1960 to 1961. Jaja held other important positions and won several honors and awards. He died on the 7th of November 1996 at the University of Nigerian Teaching Hospital in Ugo at the age of 78. But wait, was this the last time any prominent Nigerian referred to Lagos as a no man's land? The short answer is no. In October 1979, the first elected executive governor of Lagos State referred to Lagos as a no man's land. Al Haji Latif Jakande made the declaration in his inaugural address at his swearing in ceremony in Lagos. While thanking the people of Lagos for the confidence reposed in him and the overwhelming support given to him during the elections, Jakande narrated a brief history of Lagos and went on to call Lagos a no man's land. Here are the highlights of that speech delivered on Monday, October 1, 1979, in Lagos. Quote, Fellow citizens of Lagos State, on Saturday, 28 July 1979, you elected me by 559,070 votes to 126,805, the first executive governor of Lagos State. Today, as a result of that election, the chief judge of this state, in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution of Nigeria, has invested me with the office. This is an inestimable honor of which I am very conscious. It is a call to service that I take very seriously in all humility, and I want to assure you that I shall spare no effort to justify the confidence which you, the good people of Lagos State, have demonstrably reposed in me. Jack and went on to say, the creation of Lagos State, like all great events, is not the achievement of one single person. The territory now known as Lagos State is a former colony province created by the British administration for their own administrative convenience. Following the cession of his sovereignty to the British crown by King Dosomu in 1861, Eko was administered independently by governor of the settlement of Lagos. Under the commission of 9th February 1866, the settlement of Lagos was governed by an administrator and a legislative council responsible to the governor of the West African settlement residing in Sierra Leone. This continued until 1874. By Lethar's patent dated 24th July 1874, the territory was administered by a lieutenant governor subject to the governor of the Gold Coast colony. Nine years later, by Lethar's patent of the 22nd January, 1883, Lagos was administered by a deputy governor responsible to the governor of the Gold Coast colony. In 1886, Lagos was again set up as a separate colony in response to a petition by the people of Lagos who resented being governed from the Gold Coast. It was administered by a governor of the colony of Lagos under Lethar's patent dated 13th January 1886. Jaconde continued, This was the first time that the territory now known as Lagos State came under one administration. The administration continued under various constitutions until 1954 when Lagos was separated from the rest of the colony and constituted a federal territory. That is to say, a no man's land. He went on to say, Thus, it is evident that for 89 years from 1862 to 1951, Lagos, with or without the rest of the colony, enjoyed a separate and distinct existence as a unit of administration with its own governor, deputy governor, lieutenant governor, administrator or commissioner as the case may be. For 68 years from 1886 to 1954, the colony of Lagos, that is, the present Lagos state, was administered together as a unit, an inseparable whole. From 1914 to 1923, the colony of Lagos had its own legislative council, while the rest of Nigeria had another council. Thus, the foundation for a Lagos state had been well and truly laid by history. According to Jack Andy, 
In 1964, while I was serving a seven-year sentence for treasonable felony and conspiracy in the maximum security prison at Kirikiri, Apapa, I came to the conclusion that the time had come to put forward a reasoned case for the creation of a Lagos state. With the assistance of my friends outside the prison walls and deliberately breaking prison regulations, this conclusion resulted in a booklet published in 1966 with a meaningful title of the case for a Lagos state. In August 1966, the then administrator of Lagos, Major Mobolaji Johnson, summoned a conference of young indigenous Lagosians to deliberate on the place of Lagos in a future constitutional arrangement. This book formed the basis of a memorandum submitted to the conference. The conference, among other things, decided that a Lagos state comprising the federal territory and the colony province of Western Nigeria should be created in a Nigerian federation. On September 12, 1966, the then head of the federal military government and supreme commander of the armed forces, General Yakubu Gowon, established an ad hoc conference on Nigeria's future. The Lagos delegation was led by Dr. Teslim Elias until he became Attorney General of the Federation when the mantle of leadership of the delegation fell on me. But it was under Dr. Elias' leadership that the Lagos delegation submitted to the ad hoc conference a memorandum for the creation of Lagos State. That memorandum was substantially a reproduction of the case for a Lagos State. And it was that memorandum, no doubt, which enabled the federal military government to reach the decision to create a Lagos state in 1967. Jack Conley, however, went on to acknowledge both the indigents and the non-indigents of Lagos state. He said, I know that the citizens of Lagos state are the most sophisticated in the country. I know that every tribe and every ethnic group in Nigeria are represented in Lagos state. I know that for most Nigerians, Lagos is the El Dorado, with much less opportunities for prosperity. I know that the indigents of Lagos State have a natural right to the services provided by their states. I know that the non indigents of Lagos State have an indisputable right to the services provided by their states of residence. He continued, There will be no discrimination against anyone on the ground of political affiliation religious belief, ethnic or state origin, sex or social status. The problem which we have inherited from the military, extremely bad roads, poor drainage, inadequate water supply, deplorable housing, neglected agriculture and a lack of market, for example, will not disappear in one day. But they certainly would disappear during our tenure of office by the grace of the Almighty God. He concluded, I ask you to pray constantly for us. More things are wrought by prayers than this world dreams of. We are embarking on a war against poverty, against community neglect, against reaction, against disease in Lagos State. And by the grace of God who loves us, we shall win. Thank you. That was a speech delivered by Haji Latif Jakande, where he called Lagos a no man's land. And finally, in 2013, a former governor of Abia State, Oji Uzo Kalu, also made the same assertion, calling Lagos a no man's land. This assertion generated a lot of debate among Nigerians. So, what is your thought on this? Kindly leave a comment below. Click this video here for a detailed history of Lagos. Don't forget to book the like button and subscribe to his Prune Media. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.